yeah, go for it. Hey, welcome back to the Carp Angler Chronicles. We've been away for quite some time, to be totally honest with you, and we apologize about that. I appreciate some of you. Might have been waiting for podcast number two, and it's been a few months. The truth is, we've recorded podcast number two uh, several times, probably four or five times, maybe. Um, and it's not gone to plan for one reason or the other. But we're back now in this new year, this new season. As, as we record this, it's the 9th of January. Um, and in this new year, we plan to come to you far more regularly than we have done. Um, so, yeah, we are back. And we're going to move forward with it. My name is Sam, Sam Barley. And obviously, I'm here with my co-host, Pete. Do you want to say hello, Pete? Check in with us. How are you doing, Sam? You all right? I'm good. I'm good. It's, uh, it's good to be back. You gotta, uh, um, we, listeners won't know this, but we planned to have like a little drink, like a drink of the episode, different drink mm-hmm. each episode. Um, what drink you got, Pete? An extra special one today, Carling. Carling. <laughs> yeah, couldn't be any worse, could it? Carling. Yeah, it's all right. It's, it's like Carling and Carlsberg, I always, uh, I always put them together. It's low end mm. beer, right? Yeah, horrible. It's to be honest, mate. It's left left over from Christmas. It was uh, mm. my, I had my aunt stay for Christmas. She brought it as a gift, um, and it's the last thing to be drunk. So that's what I'm doing. Yeah, now. yeah, yeah. So fishing, onto fishing wise for myself, I've done bugger all over the last few months. Normally, this time of year is when I would do more fishing, um, but it seems to be the older I get, the more responsibilities I've got which is not nice. <laughs> and the more I have things tied up at this time of year, um, Pete, I know you haven't been able to get out either of you, um, but I think you're planning on going back to an old haunt. Yeah. Really? Do you want to mention that or not? Yes. Well, the last, the last time I went fishing was actually when we, one of our failed attempts in recording episode two, wasn't it? I think you were on the bank as well. <laughs> yeah, um, I was on the bank. Mm. And it's it's actually really annoying, isn't it? Because we had a bit of a um, oh, we've actually had a really big. good episode, and you listen back. To I it think it was all right. It's just the, the audio quality is just it's just not up to scratch because we were on the bank, dodgy signal. Um, I think you've tried to upload it, haven't you? But it's just iTunes wouldn't didn't like it. it Am I right in saying? Yeah, but yeah, exactly that. You're exactly right. Yeah, we did this. We so we did one of our many failed podcasts. We did on the bank. Um, and it was just good. We just got into the nitty gritty. We would, well, I was talking about, I think I actually both of us went in depth on bait and different, you know, theories about that. It's just a good, good stuff that I think, you know, a certain um, ilk of angler would have really appreciated. Unfortunately, the audio on it was so bad. The piece of software I uploaded it to <laughs> sent me a message and said, like came up with an automated message and said, this is not good enough quality. It won't appear in da 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 um, So unfortunately, we weren't able to roll with that. I don't know whether we'll be able to edit it at some point when we get a bit better at editing um, and bring it out to you guys. But yeah, that was a good episode. So that that was the last time of year out, Pete. That was, that was like November, right? Uh, I think early December, yeah. That is, the, that is the last time I was out on the bank. Yeah. Yourself? Um, trying to think. You can tell we don't script these podcasts, can't you? <laughs> um, I think. No, I went. No, it's not. I went out actually. I took my girlfriend out. My my poor girlfriend, who didn't really want to go, but she went anyway. Um, because like times at a premium, we had a day to spend together. Um, so I took her fishing. Um, and yeah, we went out just to more of a like day ticket. Not day ticket, but that's not even a day ticket. More of a runs water, um, like a club water. Um, yeah, had a few fish out, just, just some small fish, just a little bit of fun in December, mid December, I guess. Apart from that, that was it. I think on this, the last time we recorded the podcast that well that we published, um, I was going to. I can't even remember which ones we published because there's so many of them went wrong. But I was going to um, get serious on a uh, local water in the Cotswolds that's 
kind of known, um, not commercially known, but yeah, it's kind of known by locals. Um, didn't go to plan. Um, unfortunately, just life happens. Um, my, I own a couple of businesses. One of them is a fitness studio. And unfortunately, we had really heavy rains up here and it flooded twice. Um, I think it was like 10 days apart or something like that. So obviously I had my hands full with that. As well as that, I've been moving house, bought bought my first house actually. Um, so I've just been up to my eyeballs and stuff. So unfortunately, despite me saying that now I've got more time to, to go angling, it's not been the case. Um, and total honesty, <laughs> the next few months isn't looking any better, uh, which is obviously a busy time of year for me. Um, Pete, I think you're... Uh, you're gearing up to do some war with an old water we used to fish, aren't you? Ah, oh, maybe. <laughs> Let's hope so. Um, uh, yeah, so you're I'm, being coy. <laughs> I uh, well, I've uh, I've uh, I've applied. I say I've applied. My uh, my membership forms all filled out, uh, and it's ready to go in the post box tomorrow morning. So hopefully, if I get accepted, yeah, we're going to join an old club we used to be members on. Uh, and I'll be honest, I'm really really excited if i didn't get on now I, I don't know what i'd do i don't know what my goal would be for the year so i'm yeah really excited um i don't know how many waters are i think it's six waters on the club ticket um, it's more than it was when i was when i was living down in Cornwall. it's it's more than then isn't it they've added more i think yeah they, they say they've added more but i think it's just like um they've given one of the like a stock bond a name basically Oh, uh, I think uh, actually one of the committee members died. So they've named a pool after him, and it's something sort of like for junior members um, to sort uh, of learn their craft on. Um, so I think that's the uh, right. the idea of it. Yeah. Um, wow. But yeah, the one I'm really looking forward to fishing is sort of like the like the runs water one. Um, and I the just runs really... water. Yeah, well, it's kind of a runs water now. So. D- what um, WR? Yeah. Is it? Yeah. It, oh, in, all the yeah, stockies of, of all the lake. Yes, exactly that. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. I've got real fond memories of doing some stalking there. Um, and I just kind of I want to do that, get myself in, and then sort of like in the springtime when that comes around, sort of uh, attack one of the bigger waters um, and try and sort of uh, formulate a little plan and really get my teeth into a place again. So that's the plan. Bit of history in that water, though, right? Yeah. Oh, all of the lake. Well, certainly three three out of the lakes mm. on the ticket mm. yeah there's a lot of history um, yeah so i don't really sort of uh want to say too much really i know it's got a bit of a, a funny sort of a publicity ban of sorts so mm. Mm. yeah absolutely but mm. that's it i understand so that neither of us have uh you're not planning on doing a lot of fishing but um one thing i was going to sort of bring up in the podcast is uh, I was going to talk about winter fishing um, and how we sort of approach it. I thought that might be a good little talking point. Um, so I don't know if you sort of wanted to sort of like mention anything, any sort of um, tips yeah. and tricks, anything you change up in your own approach when it comes to fishing at winter. Mm, yeah. Yeah. You sprung. Yeah. I just want to say like the, for people listening, this podcast, like, by the way, we literally, we, send a few messages to each other. Yeah, we can do it then. Yeah, yeah, let's do it then. We don't plan any of this. So don't think this is scripted. Don't think we've come together and we'll be like, yeah, we're going to give them these tax. There's none of that. Like this is literally, this is as often oh, yeah, I've as just, you could possibly get. <laughs> I've just sprung that on you. Yeah, which is great. Uh, and obviously uh, that is the best way. If it, was to pl- if it was planned out, I don't think I could talk genuinely. I just don't think I could do that. I think there's a real talent to scripting things and obviously television you need to have that skill. I don't think I have it. I think I'm better off the cuff. Um, anyway, waffling on. Yeah, winter, how do I change it? <sighs> that depends on the kind of water I'm fishing, right? So, I mean, where I'll talk about where I am now in, in my angling. I don't really want to be fishing for uh, um, a lot of runs or not even a lot of runs. I don't... <laughs> If I'm going to make time out of my fucking busy life and get on the bank and give it my all, and if I go on the bank, I'm going to give it my all, then I want it to be for some fish that I really want to catch. And generally, not always, but generally speaking, that means they're going to be lower stock venues. 
So how I would change my tactics for winter, it's going to depend on that venue. And I know people probably don't want to hear that. They want to be like, well, what, what's the latest thing with it? Well, what do we do with the thing? And how do we get more? But it depends. And this is the thing. And this is what is missing from angling in general, I think, is context. Like it, You can read articles and magazines. I don't, but I realize a lot of people do. And you can get some advice. And I'm sure a lot of it's great. But how much context to that advice is there? How much does that apply to your water? You know, does that apply for you know, weedy waters or silty waters? Does it apply to the type of fish you have? I mean, carp aren't just carp. Yeah, if you if you study them and look at them, some waters they have carp with different mouth, like different a different uh, head patterns, different angles, b different uh, mouth movements and sometimes you have to adjust things for that so you can read something that oh doing this such and such rig fishing over this kind of baiting approach is doing really really great in winter because they're moving slower and maybe that's applicable for some waters maybe it's not for others are they generally moving slower in the winter yeah but do they all feed the same no absolutely not if you spend enough time looking at fish feeding um some of them will feed more parallel to the bottom. Some of them will feed more vertical to the bottom. They have different shaped mouths. Uh, and generally, there's a similar, similar lineage in, in, in waters, right? So, you know, some waters are fish. They tend to upend a lot, right? So in winter, okay, well, they're not moving much and they're upending a lot. You're going to need to get fairly specific with your baiting approach as well as your rig to catch those fish. Because if they're upending a lot and not moving much, they're going to be harder to catch. You know, compared to the stark opposite is where they're more horizontal to the bottom and they're moving a lot. That's an easier fish to catch. So I appreciate I've like waffled on on this answer, but it depends on so much. So what, what do you but, mean by that sort of like, sorry, I'm butting in, man. Um, what do you mean mm. by like the, the upending a bit? So obviously you mean sort of... So, yeah. Go on. So... All right, let's, well, let's talk about how fish could feed, right? And listen, I'm by no means an expert on this, but this is what I've observed over years, and, and I'm, yeah, I kind of go way deep, way deeper than I probably should do. But this is my findings. What do I mean by upending? Well, okay, a fish will, let's say a carp, right? Just talking about carp, this is carp, carp angler chronicles. That will, a carp will come down and take a piece of food, let's say off the bottom, because that's generally how we're angling for them a lot of the time, it'll come down to the bottom one of many ways. It could be fairly so fairly parallel to the bottom as it comes in, meaning its belly, it, its nose to its tail, to put it simply, would be the same angle as the bottom. It'll be parallel to the bottom or fairly close to it. Then, if it's got an over-protrude mouth, it, it wouldn't need to lift its tail up much it could you know suck it in without doing much movement or it could have to move a little bit or that fish could have the characteristic or mouth or just habit of coming in and really upending meaning mm -hmm. it really lifts its tail up high to suck in the bait now that can be as i just kind of alluded to that can be due to the angle of its head the shape of the fish the shape of the mouth, or it could just be due to how those fish feed. It could be due to the um, the sediment, the substrate of the bottom, which that will dictate how fish feed. A fish would feed different on hard gravel than it would do in silt, for example. Um, so that's what I mean. Does that fish, when it comes in to eat, does it lift its tail up much or not? That's what I'm saying. And then further on from that, what angle does it come at? Does it come on close to the bottom and then feed, or does it come from high up and then come down? Now, I appreciate, like, look, you can tie yourself in knots here and end up not doing anything. I'm not suggesting you, you know, go too far with this, but I am suggesting you should bring this into consideration, particularly in winter when fish tend to not move as much. Now, obviously, they can not move as much if you do tight baiting patterns, particularly with particles. They're not going to move as much either. Um, I just generally feel in winter, this aspect comes into play a lot. So I reckon that's probably the first thing I look at subconsciously when, when I'm looking to change a baiting or fishing 
um, rigging, whatever you want to call it, strategy towards catching fish. Hmm. Okay. So, so like going on to bait then, I don't know the best way to, to word this. So you sort of talk about like the angle of the fish and sort of like a small patch of particle. Yeah. But how does that sort of, um, I don't know, it's such a, the way you've described it, I guess, is such a broad spectrum. It's kind of like hard to point at one thing. It's kind of hard for you to pinpoint a, a certain area. Um, so I don't know if we give an example of a water or yeah. say sort of like, I mean, what you said could be so many different factors from like the, the strain of fish, the size of the fish, the depth of water, yeah. um, is completely different. So is it, I was sort of like on a more sort of, um, like a, like a basic approach, I guess, would you be sort of like changing sort of like the actual bait that you use? Would you be changing sort of like your rig set up, but you're making yeah. everything more discreet. Yeah. So you're sort of changing like the weight of your lead. Is there any of this sort of come into consideration or are you just looking at fish behavior? Yeah. Um, yeah, yeah, no, it would do. I mean, lead in terms of the weight of my lead, that was, the, I think that was the last thing you said. So I'll pick up on that. Uh, I, I like a heavy lead. <clears throat> I've got, I've got some friends who are very good angler. Rootsy, one of them, loves a light lead and I mm. get it and, it and it works well. Um, for me, I like a heavy lead. I'll use a pretty damn heavy lead, you know, five ounces, four ounces, unless um, I can't get away with that. If I'm fishing in, you know, thick silt, obviously I'm not going to mm -hmm. strap up a five ounce lead. It's just going to pull everything through there. And as well as that, there's no need because a lead plugged into silt will act a lot heavier and you'll get the hooking effect, etc. So lead, lead wise, I'll, I'll go heavy. Um, if I can, if not, then it's because it's plugging in silt. Um, even in weed, I mean, people say use a light lead in it. I don't look, it's getting, unless it's a very light lead. If you have fish, it, even if let's say you've got a light lead in weed, let's just say it does rest on some weed. Once you've got fish in there, let's presume they're of decent size. You know, th they're going to be moving the weed. That lead's getting to the bottom. Trust me on that. And then mm. you're moving your, your hook link, which could potentially come into it. So even then, I, I think, yeah, just, let's go heavy. Um, so generally, I'll go for a heavy, heavy lead. I would drop the lead in the weed. Um, apart from that, in terms of bait, I'll change my baiting approach. I won't put in as much bait. But even then, like a lot, a lot of times in, in summer, I, I won't put that much bait in. I, I mean, I generally am more, I find the fish. If you need to give them quite a bit of bait to get them going, then great. But generally, you don't. Um, and particularly if you've managed to pre-bait and establish that bait, you know you don't need to get them going as much. They they can recognise your bait and feed on it with somewhat enthusiasm enough to get hooked. So nice. even then, you don't necessarily need to put in loads. But sometimes I do put in a lot of bait. Um, but general, generally speaking, yeah, I guess I'd be use less bait, and I'd be very very selective over what bait i would use in winter i don't want a really oily bait um because obviously that's going to lock up it's going to congeal in the cold weather you're not going to get the same dispersion um of food signals for the carp um which is obviously very very important in terms of attraction um, for fish so yeah I'd, I'd change bait in that way um i think the other thing you said was was rigs I tend to change my rigs dependent upon how I'm, like the the, the fish I'm fishing for and the, the the circumstance of it and the substrate and if there's weed if there's not, um, I know some people like to go you know quote unquote lighter, in the winter I don't do that I don't I'm not one for dropping my hook size you know, uh, to a smaller pattern I uh, I mean, I keep my no. hooks big you know I'm, I'm fishing with like fishing with a size four um maybe a six uh, I, I like big hooks i think they do less damage i think they do the job better you know um so i don't really refine anything per se um mm -hmm. so yeah it's probably a boring answer it's probably not what people want to hear i'm sure people want to hear just like well i just want to know what the best winter rig is what's the best winter bait well there isn't one you know it, it's it's case dependent and i think i said this earlier it, it's context Context is the key, guys. You know, 
it, it's there's no one best pop up rig. You know, how are you fishing? What are you fishing over? How are those fish feeding? How are you getting them to feed? Because when you bait, you are influencing how they feed to one degree or another. All these things come into play. So just, you know, I know it's very in vogue right now to just have your go-to rig for pop-ups and go-to for, and generally I do. I don't complicate it. I don't change rigs all the time because I don't think that's good. But at the same time, I have a few different rigs for a few different scenarios and I'm not afraid to change rigs because it's a different scenario. I read into that rather than just sticking with my favorite pop-up rig. I think that's a big mistake that a lot of people make. Well, anyway, that's me waffling. What, what about yourself, Pete? Like what well, you just said, sort of like your favorite pop-up rig. Um, and mm. that's kind of a, that's like, that's a big thing that people go to in the winter, isn't it? Everyone sort of moves over to pop-ups, a lot of bright ones. Yeah. Like I, I often do, like I've, we chatted in the last pod, which will never see the light of day. I was talking about my pop-up recipes, <laughs> which is really annoying. Um, yeah. But yeah, so I often sort of in the winter, I do, I do that sort of uh, go over to pop-ups and it's just what I feel is, uh, it just feels sort of like, like the thing to do but i actually think it sort of hinders me quite a bit now um very rarely do i sort of like fish on the bottom in the winter mm. i always fish a pop-up i don't know why like i don't know why it's just sort of over the years it's just become the thing to do um mm. whether it's because i'm fishing single baits um a lot of the time yeah not sure um but yeah sort of like my pop-up rig i'm using well, i've been using multi-rigs for a long time now I know the Ronnie rigs all in fashion. I've tied up a few Ronnie rigs. I used to use a 360 rig. I think you used to love a 360 rig. Um, if they're tied up safely, it's all good. But yeah, I've, just, I've never caught on a Ronnie rig, if I'm honest. <laughs> but yeah, that's sort of a. I get sort of tied up in traditions, I think. And I think it sort of holds me back. I don't know why, but I never fish a bottom bait in the winter. Um, yeah, it's just a funny one. I don't know what your thoughts are. What what do you mean by tied up in traditions? Like, like your own traditions, or, or yeah, exactly, or, you know, yeah, exactly group thing. That. Like what what people go by. I think it's um, what people go by. Um, I don't know. It's just it's just what I've sort of um, put into my angling over the last sort of I don't know however many years I've been like, carp fishing, um, and it's kind of like yeah, my own little. Uh, I get caught in my own sort of. Uh, my own ways maybe i need to try mm. something a little different um, it's always what i go to i've caught a lot less fish on pop-ups than i have on bollock baits put it that way yeah yeah so so let's say right ah oh, let's give it a scenario right i'm interested let's say you go to a lake next weekend you've never been there before but you know a bit about it right let's say it's i don't know not big 10 acres um it's about 10 foot deep, pretty uniform, slopes down. It's a typical kind of quarry. Quite a bit of weed, although obviously at this time of year, beginning of January, a lot of that's dead, but they're still there. Um, how would you go about that from start to finish? You get on the lake. Are you? Yeah, I know. Big question. I want you to riff on it. I think this is something <laughs> that a scenario that people would be in, right? So, and even if they're not, maybe they're just interested. I don't know. What would you do? What would be your first approach? What would you do when you get to the water? And then, you know, how would you um, tackle up, rig up? I don't know what the terminology would be for that scenario. Okay, so, um, all right, oh, yeah, I'll just go through what I'd do. So, I, uh, location. Um, I've got, a, like, a good habit, I think, of I will sort of watch and watch and watch of water. And I've many times sort of... Um, spent too long i think walking around the water so i'm just i'm keen to find something so presuming i say I, I see some sort of fish i find some fish i see them in the edge or i see some flat spots or anything you know sort of like indicate fish on this water so how would i approach it in the winter time um i would probably approach it so uh, i've been fishing helicopter style uh, so just fish a multi-rig single bait sort of cast to them um a lot of i say a single bait i might put one or two other baits out there um but i, I wouldn't bait heavy for sure uh, and when i'm talking baits i'm talking boilies um, mm. 
but yeah that would be my gen generic approach winter time trying to nick a bite single baits mm -hmm. cool man and let, let's you don't hear this because of the way we're recording but there was just some serious noise popping off I uh, my my just not my drink and exploded everywhere. So for the listeners, I apologise about that yeah. huge. Noise. I had it. Um, <laughs> did you? Yeah. Um, okay. Uh, I was muted at the time, so I didn't think you'd hear. Um, so let's just okay. Let's say right. It's like you've climbed trees. You've spent hours trying to find a fish. Generally, you're going to find them. Let's just say you can't. Right. You cannot find the fish. You can't find the fish there. What are you doing? Oh, dude, well, you've got to, you've got to sort of uh, go with your instincts. So if you've sort of um, got swims where you can fish to some snags, you think the fish are going to hold up there, you're really rustling something, mate. You've got a munchie on or something. <laughs> it's, uh, it's ice. It's ice. ice. The, part of the reason why I asked you to go through that was I wanted to go and get some ice from the kitchen. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> just reloading my drink. A little sneaky. You never Carry said on. you're drinking. Ah, uh, no, I didn't. I started it with an Amarula. Um, you know, I like an Amarula. Uh, for those of you who don't know, it's from the uh, Amarula. This sounds like an advert for Amarula. It's a, uh, it's a, it's a liqueur. It's like a cream liqueur. It's from the Amarula tree, which is in Africa. It's really nice, actually. I know I'm sounding very girly about my drink right now, but it's nice. Um, although it's just exploded everywhere. So I'm moving on to my whiskey which is uh, Buffalo Trace Kentucky Straight Bourbon Whiskey. Nice. Yeah. Nice. Maybe you can hear the cork. You had a cream liqueur sort of aperitif, did you? Yeah. No, just, I, just... I would go the other way around. <laughs> nah, warm, warm my gut up. Let it, let it know what's coming. That's where I was going. Anyway, Pete, come on. Let's back to it. You, so you get to a venue. You can't, you can't see any fish showing. You say okay. you'd go with your instincts. What would, what would that be? I, so and I'll tell you what I got, would do. Okay, so wind direction. I think direction. they'd be very different. Okay. So uh, I'm looking at wind direction. You've got your depth of the water, sort of like the weather conditions. Is the sun out? Is it not out? Um, so if it's if it's, if it's it's warm, well, if it's the sun's I'll out, tell you. I'll, I'll tell I'd you. be going I'll to the, the shallow scenario. water. I'll, go on. I'll tell you. Hang on. There's no wind. Okay. There's zero wind. There hasn't been any wind. For five days, this is a ridiculous scenario. There hasn't been okay. any wind for five days, right? Yeah. There's no sun. There hasn't been any any. Well, there is sun, but there's been no direct sunlight for five days. Okay, Jesus. the the bottom the 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 topography is very uniform, right? It just slopes down fairly steadily all around the lake. It's a square lake, let's just say, and uh, that's it. What I'm trying to say is there's nothing to go on. No yeah. watercraft. Uh, nothing. Is it still 10 acres? And the reason, it's still 10 acres, Pete. The reason why, yeah. I'm ask, why, why I'm projecting this, the reason why I'm trying to build this up is because I think a lot of people, maybe that listen to this, would take this advice and use it as a replacement for them not really knowing what to do. Because I think there's a lot of people out there they hear that they're supposed to do good watercraft and all this, that, and the other. And of course they want to, but they don't really know where to start with it. And maybe they just want to get angling and catch some fish and then learn alongside that. Now, don't get me wrong. I think everyone should be learning their watercraft because if you don't, I mean, look, do what you want. If you want to get good at angling, you need to learn your watercraft. So you need to be doing that. But sometimes we need to just say, okay, my watercraft has failed me. I've not found the fish. What do I do in that scenario? And I think by the question that I'm asking, I'm basically cultivating the answer to that situation, if that makes sense. Yeah. Okay. So um, I, I know nothing. I see nothing. I'm going to put a little bit of bait out. I'm going to put some bait out and see if I can get a reaction. Uh, okay. It's one of them. So I'd pick a spot um, and I'd bait up over it. I might not even sort of cast a rod over there. I could look for some telltale signs. Uh, if it's in the edge or whatever, I can sort of bait spots, come back to them, see if we've got fish feeding, any signs of anything, whether the bottom's been disturbed, you know. Um, God, this is a proper taskmaster of a question, this is Sam. Um, yeah, I know. So then, so um, when it comes to fishing, uh, I would probably, ooh, three rods, two rods, let's do two rods. 
um, I would have one rod with a pop-up and I would be using that to cast around um, so I can, I can if I see any signs of fish in the session I can move the rod I can cast it and I think probably sort of like every hour I'd be looking to move anyway so I'm fishing a single hook bait I'm looking for a quick bite uh, if it's not happening in one spot there's no harm in trying another another thing I'd probably try and do as well if I've literally seen nothing, is I might fish with tight lines. So normally I like to have like a nice slack line. Uh, but I think if I fish with nice tight lines, um, I'm going to get a few mm -hmm. line bites. And if you get a few line bites, you know that there's sort of fish there. You know, you know swimming into your lines, you're probably spooking them. But it gives you an indication that there's something in there. So I think that's something It's something I've used in the past on day ticket waters. And it's sort of, uh, it's sort of like indicated to me there are sort of fish in the swim. Um, so yeah, so that's that. So what were your sort of thoughts, Sam? Interesting. Yeah. I mean, I wouldn't be going for tight lines for sure, mm. um, but I totally get why you would. Um, my reason for not going for tight lines is I would, I don't want a fish. They are masters of their environment, right? Mm -hmm. Okay. They bump into a line. Okay. So let's just say it's happening how we think it is. And most times it's not. Let me tell you that. What we think is going on as a result of a beep or whatever is we're pretty off the mark, I believe. But let's just say, oh, we get some beep. Oh, it's a line, you know, quote unquote line bite. It's a fish knocking into the line. Let's just say we're lucky and that's a carp because that's what we're fishing for, right? Do you think that carp isn't a little bit like, holy shit, what was that alien thing that just rubbed along my flank that I don't usually feel? I, I think it's fair to say that it would probably feel like that. Now, yes, yeah, you know, carp are very, very inquisitive and, and they, they're they pretty good at knowing what isn't danger and what is. Like You can look at carp in snags and you can shout over them. In fact, I was listening to someone talk about it. I can't remember, but someone was talking about this recently. Um, but I've known it to be true for years. You can you can shout over them in the snags, but if you drag your foot along the floor or a tree or something and they sense the vibrations, they are freaking out of there. Yeah. Now, it, is that because they can't actually pick up on the voice projected? Or is it because it's just not within something that would be inherently dangerous to them? I don't know. I think, I, I mean, well, I think actually, another I one, I don't, you, I'm interrupting you, sorry, D, but another one, I don't remember. We remember that Syndicate Lake. This is going back a long time. That used to be yeah. The fish used to hold up in the snags, especially at night time. You could shine a bright light in there, and they wouldn't budge. You could see them. All is this the, up, but you, you, you this move is the a lake branch. I had some beef on. Gosh, you 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 attract beef. <laughs> I think you yeah. attract it. You 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 have a a knack of uh, putting yourself out there in a controversial way at times. But go on. Yeah, 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 yeah. I do. You're right. I do. I don't. I mean, more so when I was younger. Yeah, I don't. I'm pretty opinionated and yeah, quick to. I'm, I don't mind. I don't mind being abrasive if I think someone's wrong or something's wrong. I stand up for it. Yeah, um, you admit uh, it when you're yeah. wrong, though. So it's all game. Oh yeah, I do. Yeah, but that was that. Look, dude, that was me when I was a lot younger and hot headed. Um, mm -hmm. I've mellowed out now. That was many years ago. But yeah, is it the syndicate where they had the, the clubhouse syndicate? I think so, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think we're on about the same one. Anyway, carry on, mate. I was just saying about uh, agreeing with you about the fish in the snags thing. I was using it as an example where you could shine a light mm. in there and that didn't spook them. So it could be pitch black. You put yeah. a real bright oh, yeah. light in there and the fish do mm. not move. But you, you rub against a branch or something and they're quickly gone. And I think because you were you were talking about lying, weren't you? So in the water in certain angles. Yeah, exactly. I mean, we've all yeah. seen it numerous times. Sort of like fish swim into line, and all of a sudden they are sort of they are out of there. And I think sort of like the direction of the line for a water makes a big mm. big deal. So I think if the line is sort of vertical in the water, this is what I've noticed anyway. Um, is they're less sort of spooky to a vertical line? You've got a line mm. going through the water horizontally. Uh, I think it really puts them on edge. That's just my belief from what I've what I've witnessed, from what I've sort of tested, and just for yeah. years of fishing, I guess. Yeah, yeah. I I make you right on that 
to a degree. Um, but my where I was going with it, and all valid points, of course, where I was going with it was, okay, so you want a tight line because you want, you know, quote unquote line bites to see if they're there. Okay, well, you've got a fish has swum into your line. Your alarm has sounded it. You know it's there. But therefore, we've both agreed that if it swims into line, it knows you're there. So what good has that really done? Well, I, it, I've just used this as an example. Um, so basically, sort of if you've got no other indication, you know, you've not seen anything, and if you're going to pick up a few line bites, you know, there's fish in the area, you don't have to keep your line tight. Um, there's not going to be, I think typically, we all know sort of like fish, sort of a lot of the time they move around in sort of groups. Um, quite often I've seen sort of one fish spook off and it's not spooked the other fish. The other fish sort of carry on around their business. It's just purely as a as an indicator. At least you know that there's fish there. You're not in the completely wrong end of the lake. There's nothing worse when you're sat there, you know, sort of like hours and hours into a session and you're just like, oh, I don't know where to move. Should I move? There's a fish here. Do you know what I mean? Um, so I just did it as a, it's just a useful mm. tool you can use, you know. Yeah, I understand what you're saying. But go on. Your approach. That's where we were. Well, I think I... Did I not say it? Oh, have I no, not? No, no, have no. I, no, have we? no. I don't know. No, oh, no, just winter in general. Lines. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, okay. So, yeah, sorry, yeah. Um, What would I do if I had nothing to go on? Mm. don't know, mate. Pro- probably call you up, ask you what you'd do. That's what you uh, normally do. I'm yeah. joking. <laughs> like, tight lines, mate. Tight lines, and we'll start another argument. <laughs> yes, another disagreement about it. No, I would. Um, no, for me, I, I wouldn't. I understand why you do that, Pete. I would not do that, mate. Um, mm. I, I would look. It's let's say it's winter. It's, it's fairly small, ten acres. I got nothing to go on. And I cannot see a fish for love nor money. I would get a and i hate this phrase but i would get a high attract i hate that word those words high attract but i'd get a highly attractive single hook bait i might attach some liquid to that which maybe i'll explain in a, another time and i would blast that around i'd rove basically i would have you know do you remember how i used to fish i used to have like one or two banker rods and i might have a roving rod i don't know if, mm-hmm. i don't know if you do remember that I would have all three on, or all two, depending on you know what the rules and stuff. I would have all my rods roving around, so I'd have one like like one high track bait, maybe some liquid around it, um, and I would move that around. I would literally leave it for around forty five minutes tops, and I would just move it around, and I would like, look at the water, and I'd systematically move it around, thinking. Okay, well, I can sweep in from here. I can sweep in from there. And I try and cover the most ground that I could do. But also with the understanding, if it's very cold, and more to the point, you know, forget air temperature. If the water temperature is very cold, you can get a lot of fish held up in a certain area. Mm -hmm. And I know, you know, if you can use use that knowledge, basically, you know, it's you want to be quite specific, you know. Moving your rods 50 yards apart, well, that's too far in that time of year. It's too far. You need to play it a little bit smaller than that. But at the same time, you can hypothesize, well, if they're they're not there, they're probably not going to be there. So I'll make my best guess. I'll move it there. You know, you can you can do a little bit of that. Um, but yeah, that would be my approach. I would just, if I had nothing to go on, as I said, I explained my general approach earlier on, but if I had nothing to go on, that's what I would do. I would have some higher tracked, baits and i'd move them around um, and i'd probably try and attract uh, attach some liquid to that whether that's in the form of a solid bag or another method um, that's that's the way i would go for it you, you know i've got to get you talking about your liquids now mm. what are we talking special about? liquids what are we talking about winter time some sort of like are we talking about like a food so- source liquid are we talking about like an essential oil a blend of things um in terms of the actual liquid uh, yeah it, it would depend um a long time quite yeah there's um i'm not going to mention him and i'm actually i'll i'll 
there was someone that um, put me on to an essential oil. I'll be honest. So for the listeners, me and Pete, we shared everything except for girlfriends. Um, but back in the day, there were some things that I kept to myself and I'm sure you kept some things yourself. I had a, a, a chat with a very knowledgeable bait person. Most of you will not be aware of who he is. Um, and he put me on to cinnamon essential oil. Did I share this with you, Pete? You back did, in the yeah, day? yeah, yeah. I did, I did. I'm such a nice guy. Yeah, so so maybe that, maybe some of that, maybe not. Um, right now, today, totally honest, if I went out tomorrow, um, I would be probably, I'd probably be using my, uh, like a, a special blend of um, enzymes and fish liquid and crustacean extract. Um, there's no, I can't put, it's not one set product that I use, so I can't really say it. It would be a mix of things. It's, it, I, I don't know. Yeah. It, it'd be wasted on most of the, most of the listeners and, uh, no offense, but it just would be, cause you wouldn't understand what I was pointing the, you in the direction of. Um, and yeah, I just don't want to share it if, if I'm totally That's honest. Fair enough. It. Fair enough. Yeah. Um, if, if somebody was to sort of, um, so. All right, so we don't have to discuss sort of like what's in your liquids. Um, although I might talk about sort of like lipids and maybe some oils and sort of like, even though it's winter time, I do think oils are pretty fantastic for sort of uh, getting mm. aminos through the water column and things. I think it's quite important. Um, but I was right. going to say, so how, what would your approach be with um, your fishing single hook baits and liquids? Are we talking about just sort of like boosted baits here? Are they just been soaking for some time? Or... No, I mean, I mean, look before that. How ridiculous is this? It's like, I don't want to, don't want to reveal my liquids. It's so ridiculous. It, it, look, I, look, folks. I don't have any, you know, super special liquids. There's a, th there's some things I really like to use. The reason why I'm being a bit of a dick about it is, um, I'm going to be fishing a water that probably some people will know, and it might liquids. I, I'm going to be using them a lot. I, do, I have used them a lot. I think they are an absolute game changer when you know how to apply them. And the liquids are going to play such a big part in, in my fishing in 2020. That's why I don't want to tell you what it's on because I'm going to you know spend you know quite a bit of time and money establishing it. And I, and I don't want someone to realize, oh, it, that's that guy off that podcast. He's fishing it. Oh, he's using it. And then just jump on the back of it. Um, but I, it's all a bit silly. Look, this is just fishing at the end of the day. Um, but anyway, to get back on track, in terms of uh, what would it be, oils or no, it wouldn't be oils. Um, I think that was your question, Pete. No, oil. Look, having oils, lipids, lipids, fats, basically, it's just a fancy way of saying fat, basically. No, I, I don't see the big thing with it. I mean, yes, it can push it oil will move through the water column right now is is it the fact that there's oil moving through the water column that's a big deal or effective or is it the fact that there is some you know let's say amino acids being projected through the water column with that oil i think it's probably the latter i think the oil in themselves i've not been that successful with it and tank testing things like that it's not giving me anywhere near the results that the other things have so oils i know some people are big on it um i'm not one of them people no and i agree with you as well i think it's exactly sort of a the perfect way to use them is, is literally as a as a as a vehicle for sort of transport through the water column so so it's it's um it's got hold of other, other bits and pieces and it's sort of like taking it on for the journey if that makes sense um mm. But I think I think that's really important, you know, especially when especially if we're fishing on the bottom. It's um especially like as if you're fishing, say, a solid PVA bag or you've got a PVA stick or whatever, and you've got like your paste in there, or you've got like a stick mix and your liquid sort of all bound in. I think it's a good way of getting it up through the water column. Um another thing I used to use when I was and I haven't used this for a long time, is if I was using liquids and I had like a mix whether it be sort of like a ground bait or a paste or whatever I've made, because I used to put wheat jam in there because of its buoyancy. Um, yeah. So the wheat jam used to float up through the water and sort of just drag everything up with it, which I thought was a, mm -hmm. was a good edge as well. Um, 
I don't know what other buoyant sort of uh, carp attractive <coughs> ingredients there are that, that that perform a similar function. To be honest, Not there's so a few. Sure. I mean, and you're absolutely right. If you can wet them down, uh, say say you want to get um, some, I don't know, greenlit mussel powder, whatever. It doesn't matter what it is. You want to get that through the water column, right? You can, yeah, you can add it to oil and have that through, but it's somewhat bound within the oil, right? That will hamper the um, solubility of that product. And generally, if it's going to be really attractive, generally speaking, it's going to be very soluble. Liver powder, for example, you are inhibiting the solubility by adding it to oil. Mm-hmm. So yes, it's moving through the water column. It's not that, not, not you know, it's, it, you're making it less detectable. Adding it to something, you know, with some like muck, pay, putting it into some like a paste or a mush with something like wheat germ that will float up through, fantastic because yes, it's floating up, it's being pushed up through the water column, but it or down if you're throwing it in, but it's not bound, it's not locked up within something. So I think yeah, that's a really good point, Pete. Like it's a good thing that you're doing. I think it's way better to use other means than oil. Um, because you know it's got some downsides to it. Um, some people get so obsessed with oil. I, I really don't get it. I really don't get it, and I've tried to to the point where you know when there's some people that you really respect, and you think, well, I definitely respect what they say about bait, and they're so emphatic about oil. I keep looking into it, and I just neither, you know, looking at it logically, scientifically, or anecdotally, I just can't get on board of it. I think it's really overrated, um, and I think it it hinders you more times than uh, than a lot of people would make out. Hmm. Do you know what I had great success on once? Go on. This is getting back some time, but sort of um, I can't remember what what the bait was. I can't remember. I made some sort of like special sort of hook baits anyway. And I just air dried them until they were sort of bone dry, bone dry. And then I just mm. drip fed uh, some sort of like organic hemp oil uh, just over time and rehydrated them purely with oil. And they were really good. They really worked. But I have to say it was a, it was very, very sort of like warm summer months. And that just as these conversations just triggered a memory. It was long forgotten. Uh, yeah. That's, that's something I did very well on. Why do you think hemp's yeah. so... Um, attractive then as a bait uh hemp oil or, or hemp itself just the, well, well, well we'll go with both you might say that hemp oil is really not attractive you've sort of um you've kind of made it quite clear so like your thoughts on oils i guess so why is it you think it's i sort think of like it's the hemp so you don't think it's the oils within the hemp that are sort of attractive? i think look don't get me wrong i think oil has got its place um for sure you know if i was rolling bait rolling boilies Look, it's going to have oils in it. I'm not saying otherwise. I'm talking about purely adding it as an extra for extra attraction. Okay. More to the point, within winter. In Mm -hmm. summer, yeah, it's got some other applications. I'm really talking about winter here. Um, But that stems over to summer as well. Why do I think hemp is so attractive? Um, I think a lot of it is to do with the nature of it. I think... I'll say something that 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 might raise some eyebrows. If you went to a complete, you know, quote unquote, virgin water, and you put in hemp, now on one hand, many people would say, oh, because it looks natural, it looks almost like snail-like, and it's it's clearly not meant. It's going to do very well. I think you'd be surprised. I think hemp does, and this is again, this is an outlandish thing. I think hemp does better on waters that are more heavily fished. Um, I really do. Now, don't get me wrong. It's a great bait. Carp like it. They like the signal it emits. I think they like eating it. I think they the texture, I think, plays into it. Maybe you could say, as they crunch it up in their pharyngeal teeth, that it, you know, that sound travels through the water and then it attracts other carp, so that plays into it. All those things are probably true. Um, but I think it works well because it's quite quite different from a lot of other baits that carp see and for whatever reason in my experience lakes that get fished more um it tends to do better in and when i say more i'm comparing that to lakes that hardly ever get fished which is some of the lakes that that me and you have fished Pete. Mm. 
Um, that's my take on it. Yeah, cool. <laughs> What's your take on it? With hemp? I yeah, don't I know. mean... I, do you know what, mate? I, I really... I've actually thought about it many times over the years. I really don't know. I really don't know. I put the question to you, just trying to play devil's advocate. Mm. Um, I don't know. A sweet I mean, corn, S- like like sweet. <sighs> sorry to cut you off. Sweet corn, such a good bait, such a good bait. Like seriously, anywhere you go, whether it's a so-called virgin water or not, like sweet. There isn't a carp. It's like sweet corn is a great bait. Maize as well. Now, you know, what is that? Is it a visual thing? Don't think it's a texture thing. Maybe it is. Don't think it is. Is it a visual thing? You know, it, it's not packing off crazy signals. We tend to think that it's, you know, particularly if you look into bait, you've got to balance the aminos and things like that. Well, you know, corn is very incomplete in that respect. But that is such a good bait. It, it kind right? of... um yeah, you just can't escape it, can you? And as a as a bait no. maker, and as somebody who has really sort of put baits together, and you've sort of created your amino spreadsheet, and you're making the perfect bait for a carp's needs, yeah. Then you think about sweet corn, and it's just, I don't know, it's just so annoying. <laughs> it's just, it's, there's no logic behind it. I can't think of a reason. They just love it. They just love yeah. it. Yeah. And it and that can yeah. go with any bait. I mean, you can make the most complete, nutritionally perfect, sort of desirable bait for a carp's need on paper. But mm. you can look at sweet corn and think, what is it? What it what is it? Why? Yeah. I don't know. Yeah. I don't know. I don't know. Then then again, you know, you could argue that yes, that's true, but when you really establish that bait. I think that word's overused, but you know what I mean? Once you establish that bait, once they see it going in, you know, in large quantities, well, it doesn't even have to be large quantities. Once they see that bait regularly, you know, are they going to get more addicted to that than sweet corn? Maybe, but also, to be honest, I haven't, I've never seen that. Um, No. I've never seen that. I've never seen that. So I, I realize I'm arguing with myself right now. Yeah, or like disagreeing it. with myself. But it's true. It, it just, it, yeah, sweet corn, very good bait. Maize, very good bait. Do you remember when we first went to our first um, water where we really got to grips with the boat? Um, mm-hmm. Do you remember I went in with buckets full, bucketfuls of uh, maize? Do you remember that? I do. I went, I, I went heavy on the maize. Mm, caught a lot of bream. Caught a lot of brain, caught a lot of carp, though. Yeah, yeah. No, I don't think you can argue with that. Um, yeah, it works. And they will eat a lot. What my point was, they will eat a lot of that stuff. I was literally putting it. I'm not suggesting you go and do this, folks. I was putting it in by the big... I was putting a lot in. Pre-baiting, spending quite a bit of time there. Um, putting a, a shed load of maize in. And uh, they just keep on eating it with more and more gusto. Yeah. Um, I don't I mean, think it's bad for them. I know we've had in depth debates before about um, the effect on the gestation of the carp and, and things like that. Um, yeah, I don't think it, it, it does any negatives there whatsoever. No, I remember we did have a good debate once about sweet corn and whether publicly, if they, if they, <laughs> if they, if they, if they crap it out whole, did they get any nutritional benefit from it? We would do it. We went in all aspects of uh, that. Was probably a really good debate. I even had people PM me like, so uh, did I, saying, it was re- <laughs> "Yeah, really, really good to see two experts go at it." <laughs> I was like, "Well, we're just we are mates. We're just you know playing devil's advocate to each other." I just got uh, on saying that Sam guy's such a dick. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so so did I, mate. I was just being nice. <laughs> yeah, was, I'm joking. I'm joking. I didn't get it. Um, but yeah, I'm, I'm joking as well, mate. Um, yeah, no, I'm joking as well. It was good. Yeah, it was good. Um, okay, dude. Where where are you going forward then? What you what? Uh, we we got to do these podcasts more often. Like we do. We need to get in the rhythm of it. We need to find our feet with it a bit. Um, I agree. I enjoy I it. For that to happen. I'll, I'll in, 
I enjoy it. I'll enjoy it more when we get more regular with it and we get a bit of a theme going and we get more listeners and they're kind of following along and it will just grow and just move together and we just all kind of move forward together. Mm-hmm. Um, but so people that want to follow on now, I mean, what are you doing, mate? Where are you going? Where are you fishing? What type of water are you on? So, well, I mean, we, we sort of discussed this earlier on, didn't we? So I'm going to be rejoining the club. Did. Um, and it's, it's sort of three lakes that interest me. Um, and I'm not really doing anything. I, I messaged a friend. Uh, I might be doing a night next week. I don't know where. It won't be anywhere special. Nobody, nowhere really of interest. It's just an excuse to get out and go fishing. Um, but I'm just waiting for an answer back from the club. And if I don't get on for whatever reason, uh, I'll have to reevaluate things. But I'm sort of until then, we'll mate. On, mate. Yeah, I would be surprised if I didn't. I'd be, I'd be, I'd be upset if I didn't, to be honest, because I've sort of got quite excited about it now. Um, oh, but, you you used to be a member. You know, you're obviously, you know, well, you conducted yourself well. You're, you know, a respectable gent. You are respected as well. Um, yeah, you're going to get on, mate. I wouldn't worry about that. Yeah, I mean, just, you never know with these things. Yeah, I think we alluded to it before in a another podcast which we recorded but didn't go out it might have been the one we forgot to press record on maybe um it's like <laughs> i think in days gone by it's like a bit of a secret society almost in the, the club um, but i think they're sort of open to more members now i think they just want more people fishing i think they want more bait going in the waters i think they want the fish they've restocked it i think i think they want to see like the waters getting fished i think they've had mm. maybe might be talking out a term here. I think they've had issues with sort of some poachers, maybe. So they want anglers they on did. the lakes. They did. They did. Um, yeah. Do you know yeah. what? They, uh, I'll, oh no, I can't mention that because we'll give it away actually. But they were, what I will say is they were very um, forerunning in um, otter prevention. Um, yeah, yeah. That's all I say. I won't say any more, otherwise, it will give it away actually. But it? Uh, yeah, it was great. And, and I was briefly a part of that on. Uh, on that, something, I'm yeah. Just, I think it's we nice, can get mate. into it. Let's just get into it. I think that was a bit of a flop, wasn't it? I don't know. No. You don't think so? No. No, I don't. No, Are I we don't. we talking about the electric sounders? I think we Pingers. can talk about it, yeah. So they, so this club, they were the first people to introduce what are called pingers, um, which basically are developed for uh, salmon farms to keep away seals. Um I went out with the, uh, the the chairman to drop some out of the boat. We went out in the boat and, and dropped these pingers around um, intermittently. And yeah, just by doing that, you can see, okay, well, this isn't, there isn't enough of them to really surround the water, so to speak. But if you look at the data, you know, look at what the effect was, they did help. So I, no, I don't think it was all for nothing. I think, are they perfect solution? Absolutely not. But it's about a club that, I mean, the water that we dropped them in, you can't fence that water. Um, well, you probably could, but good luck. It's got some crazy terrain around it. Very, very difficult for, for logistics. There's several different reasons. Um, I believe it's next to like area of outstanding natural beauty. You can't just put fences up wherever you want. I believe that to be true. I might be wrong on that. Um, but I'm pretty damn sure. So there's uh, logistics in place. You've got to do what you can do to protect your your stock, your water, your your heritage. And I think, in, you know, employing those pingers was the right thing to do for the club. And I think they work somewhat. So, so I think it was a good thing, mate. To be honest, I think like a, a bit of a the idea behind them is fantastic. And I think if there was sort of a some sort of scientific research behind it, they would 100% work. But I think the trouble was is the frequency they were on was for sort of deterring seals. And I think a frequency would probably, and I don't even know anything. We're just, I'm just talking maybe completely out of term, but I think the frequency would probably have to be different for an otter. I don't even know if they were effective or not. I heard mixed reviews. I had some people sort of slated it. Other people spoke very highly of it. I really wasn't involved. I know you were involved a little bit more than me. I wasn't involved with it enough to really sort of to comment. But in my head, it was sort of a yeah. sort of science. They would perfect. work. Yeah, they would. I think they would work if you had somebody 
dedicated with a little bit of science to try and to uh, figure out what yeah. frequency would be best for the Terran Ossa. Look, well, yes, yeah. Look, they did work somewhat. They weren't perfect, right? Uh, and I'm realistic about this. I don't, you know, I, I don't have road tinted glasses on whatsoever. They worked somewhat. They, you know, they weren't perfect. But and, and look, yes, the frequency probably wasn't right, right? But let's look at it. We're looking at a water, uh, a predatory water mammal right? The seal and the otter. They're both mammals. They prey in water. They feed on similar things. You can kind of hypothesize, and yes, this isn't exact science, but you can kind of say they're most likely going to have a very similar hearing system working at the same frequencies as one another very closely. I think Mm. it's fair to say that. So, Interesting you say it. I've, yeah, never, you... I've never even considered it. We haven't had this chat in the past because I'm quite good at remembering things like this. And actually what you said there kind of makes sense. I get it. I get what you're saying. Yeah, but but look, it's also a bit of bro science, <laughs> as I would <laughs> call it. Like, it's just yeah. like, well, they're both mammals and they both, you know, swim in the water. But they're at the same the time, same that's, sort of that, prey, that's kind of true. We, yeah. yeah, look, there's to my knowledge, there is no one gone out and compared the dynamic range the the frequencies of sound travel that can be received by otters versus seals to my knowledge maybe someone's done it or maybe someone knows them each independently of one another maybe there's some independent tests i'm sure there is actually i haven't looked into it okay back in back when this was going on uh google wasn't as prevalent i guess well it probably that probably wasn't was it we weren't googling everything maybe maybe we were i, I wasn't I, I think we were um, not as much <laughs> as these days, I think. No, right? This no, no, no. this day and age, internet, wow. Smartphones Massive. weren't so much a thing. No. No, it was... Um, I think I was still on... Yeah. No, I think I was on a keypad thing. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, I, I, I'm look, it probably wasn't perfect. If it was solely engineered for otters, would it have been better? Yeah, it probably would have. But was it still something better than nothing? Yeah, I think it was. Um, so I think it was a good thing for that. And do you know what? Whoever brought that about, and and I think it was, uh, I think it might have been um, DS, the guy that the the so called bait guru. Who I had a few back and forth with regarding bait. Mm-hmm. I don't know if you remember that. I think it might have been him. Who he's a great guy. Obviously, did a lot for the club. Um, I think it was him that brought it about. Good on him. So I think he did a good thing by doing that, and I, I believe he saved some fish in the result. Uh, as a result of of his actions, so good for him. And he clearly he was clearly a great guy. He did a lot for the club. Um, so yeah, I think it was a good thing, mate. Yeah, uh, yeah, I don't doubt it. Anyway, the um, I guess their their big water, the twelve acre one. Um, that's been that's that been, big. That, well, is this the big water on the club? <laughs> um, <laughs> it's not the big water though, is it? Let's be honest. On the, no, I'm talking about the big water on the well, on the club. Anyway, it's been fenced. The big one has been fenced, um, which is sort of a big attraction for me. So I, I know there's a one of their waters on there has got a, a proper otter fence. It was put in by I think I'm pretty sure we had this chat the other week on the other pod that never saw the light of day. But I think it was um, put together by embryo angling. I think it's one of the first waters they fenced. Um, I think so, I was shit faced on that podcast. Yeah, really? Oh, we had a real big mm. chat about embryo angling. Um, okay. Yeah. This isn't the one on the bank. I remember that yeah, one. Yeah, it is on the bank. Yeah, it was that one. Oh, really? Yeah, we've got a recording okay. of it. You have to go back and listen. Um, oh, shit. Okay. So that's a I wasn't drunk then. Anyway. Um, and <clears> do you <throat> know, I haven't, I haven't walked around that water for probably 18 months or so. Um, I used to walk just... Because it, it was a public footpath, it's a good place to take the dog and stuff. Got a little carpy fix, walking around, chatting to anglers, that sort of thing. Um, but it really mm. looks like they've they've been keeping looking after it anyway. Um, what's what's the stock like now? This is the so, the so called you know big what? one that's obviously your cup of tea. Yeah, uh, yeah. Um, 
I don't really understand. The trouble is, we're talking in code. <laughs> it's just ridiculous. Um, oh no, it's just I was just saying it, it's the big water that's obviously your cup of tea. Oh, I get it. Very good. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Hilarious. Well, that's pretty clever. Yeah, yeah. very. Um, I yeah. mean, look, if you were a good angler, you could make a killing there. That's all I'm saying. Yeah, you reckon? Well, um, right. Anyway, you've completely lost my trailer for what's the stock of fish in there? Don't know. Mm. I was chatting to somebody the other day, and they think about sixty-five to seventy fish. Carp um, or fish in general? Carp. Mm. What kind of size? Go up to sort of upper upper thirty. Um, mm. I know when we were there for Cornwall, that's and guys hey. for Cornwall, that's pretty good. Mm. However, saying that, if we do a on the bank pod together, and it is a time when you're visiting family in Cornwall. Hint, hint. Is, um, mm. I, I think we could go to this this little water that I checked out the other day, and that's got a couple of forty pounders swimming around it. Um, and I think oh, is be... this? Is this? Uh... Yeah, this yeah. is the one I, that, that neither me or you are keen on, right? Or, yeah. am I, or is this something else? Hey, yeah, probably. I don't know, but I thought it'd be a good place for us to go. It's quite interesting. Just gin clear water, massive fish. <clears throat> swimming round. It's quite a small lake, though. That's the only sort of issue. Mm. But anyway, let's save that for an off-pod discussion. Um, so yeah, my, my, well, my plans for the year, I think, are pretty much, apart from the odd social, um, if my buddy lives down here who fishes, uh, it's going to be focused on those club waters. Um, I'll pick one of the two main carp waters to attack and really try and sort of campaign it and then I've got the other one for a sort of runs water a bit of distraction if I'm spending a lot of days blanking but that's my plans well mm, do you know what and you you do know this I've got a lot to say about that club and those waters um, mm. but I'll save it uh, I've got a, I've got a hell of a lot to say actually um, we'll save it for another podcast but yeah I get it sounds good let's uh Let's get something out there in the ether. You're saying about a in-person podcast. I think we need to do that. A, because there'll be no technical difficulties. And we've had so many diff- technical difficulties. We're shit. Um, <laughs> yeah, it's, ridiculous. it's been... Re- Honestly, folks, like we, re- we published that last podcast. I think it was in November. It's now January. We have been trying multiple times. Don't think that we, we've just given up. We've been trying. Could we have done tried harder? Yeah, we could have. Uh, but we, we, we still tried. Um, regardless of that, Pete, in-person podcast, I think it's got to happen. Mm-hmm. Uh, uh, Carp Angler Chronicles social has got to happen. When are we doing it? Excellent question, Sam. I don't know. I don't think now's the time to organise it. Um, I think now's the perfect time. Dude, I don't know. When do you want to do it? I don't know what your schedule's like. For me... It's it's hard to get away for sort of long periods, so mm. I reckon we mm. we pick a water in the southwest, meet up, go for it. I I I see it happening in a in a Cotswold water. Yeah. Um. Yeah. Yeah. Um. Yes. Cotswold Water Park. Yeah, Maybe I've got, next I've got week. to buy a guess. <laughs> yeah, good luck. <laughs> I don't want to buy a club <laughs> ticket <laughs> for a one night sesh. <laughs> oh, fuck. I'll buy you a ticket, dude. My treat. Can you take a guest? You might uh, have a range yeah. of guest ticket or something. Yeah, I'm sure it'll be fine. I'll just turn up. Yeah, just turn up. That's it. So, anyway, your plans for the new year, mate. You've been pretty blase on what you're doing. Um, I could see you not fishing a great deal if you're sort of uh, really tied up with work. Yeah, um, I mean, like I work in in the health and fitness industry. Um, no, that doesn't mean I sell like Herbalife. <laughs> um, I own a I own a gym, a studio, a fitness studio, gym, and a, a consultancy, in depth consultancy business. So yeah, I mean, years gone by. January, February was busy for me. But the way my business is now, it's you know it's leverage and type of clientele bringing on more high higher end stuff. 
it doesn't affect it as much. And plus, you just do the work ahead of time. Um, so it's not so much that I've got more work on than normal. It's just that I'm actually looking at expanding certain area of my business, which will take up more time. As well as that, I've got a new home, which I'm still trying to do out and in between work and everything else. Um, trying to, you know, fulfill all of my uh, my partner, my girlfriend's wishes. She wants it, you know, done up real nice. Anyway, my, for one reason or the other, my time is tight. So I don't know what I'm going to, what chance I'm going to get to go out. Um, I think realistically, my next session is going to be probably a stalking session, winter stalking session. Not easy to stalk in the winter, but a winter stalking session on a club water fairly close to me. Um, there's some good fish in there. Um, nice old fish. Leany descendants, um, by all accounts. Some nice fish. Nice. Uh, that's, that's what I'll be doing. In terms of, you know, fishing somewhere hard, I had that place that I was going to fish. Um, the the the, targ- the the fish I wanted got caught. Um, so I dropped out of there um, with the thought that it's probably not going to come out in quick succession. Although obviously that can happen. It's very unlikely. Um, and, and given the circumstance, I decided to step away from that. But yeah, I'm a little bit, I'm a little bit lost. I mean, I'm up here in the Cotswolds. I was born up here, but I didn't do my angling up here. I didn't, you know, earn my stripes up here. I'm out of my world. I don't know that many people here. I'm not that well, I'm not connected at all, actually, up here. Um, And obviously, I know a lot of the waters, the usual waters, but after fishing, you know, some great waters down in Cornwall, you know, unknown waters, I want the same kind of thing up here. And obviously, because I'm not in that click, it's hard to get. Um, I guess I'm saying this in hope that someone will, you know, take pit, take pit, <laughs> and uh, say, "Hey, hey, sir, yeah, I can, I can let you." But I'm joking. Um, so yeah, I don't know. I'm in limbo, Pete. I don't know. I want. I look. I'm looking at you joining that club again. Yes, you're not going to be fishing for that big fish, that bigger fish, but just to be back in that environment, back in that Cornwall scene, I miss it, mate. I'll be honest. Mm. I think there's something about it. You can be on your own angling in Cornwall, but you're still, ah, I don't know, it sounds so cheesy, but you still feel like you are pioneering something. Or something like that, depending on where you're fishing, of course. Maybe not the the big one you're on about. Maybe not that, but the other waters, I just feel like maybe you're, I don't know, can't, can't put it into words. I cannot put it into words. I think the angling up here is very different. Yes, there's bigger fish up here. Da, 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 da. I think it's just a different feel to it. Yeah. And, uh, I think you're competing against just, other people a fair bit up there, aren't you? Yeah. 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 And there's not the unknown. Like, I can think of six waters in Cornwall that aren't angled for, that have carp in, that would be largely untouched. Yeah that you cannot say the same up here. And if you can, I don't know where those bloody waters are. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I look, like, just look at um, Southwest water. Look at Southwest water, right? Their water's in Cornwall. Not necessarily the ones that you can fish. Like, the, the ones they own. Look at those waters. You can't fish there, and of course I'm not condoning you fish somewhere you're not allowed to fish. But just that alone, like there's a lot of waters in Cornwall that are untapped. I don't think you can say the same up here. No. Yeah, I probably I get what you're saying, mate. I do I do get what you're saying. And I think maybe if, if they these waters in Cornwall have been fished, it's it's um I think a lot more can be kept really hush hush, can't it? Hush hush. Almost forgotten of about course. people move on and then it won't be fished for another decade. I think that happens. I really do. Yeah, I was, I yeah, yeah, exactly. I went just after Christmas. I went down to Cornwall, uh, see my parents, and then I rent out a lodge, like a wooden lodge or a hot tub every year. Nice. And uh, so I, yeah, I went around Cornwall. Um, I went back to some old places that we <laughs> used to go to. Um, I should have given you a shout, mate. Um, sorry, I didn't. 
Um, and just some places, I just, I looked at it through a different lens because I don't live there. I was looking at it in terms of angling and thinking, realistically, if I was here, like this is what I'd be doing. And I think, look, maybe I'm chatting a load of crap, but I think Cornwall, as far as I'm aware, that's like the last frontier of pioneering carp angling in the UK. And that sounds extreme. Hey, I'm sure maybe you can get some of that in Wales or Scotland or somewhere. But there's some waters in Cornwall and I would bet my bottom dollar that there's some carp in there. Um, in some very special waters that I, they are not fished for. They're not angled for. Um, I just think you, 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 I think there's some water to, there's quite a lot of water to be pioneered in Cornwall. To this day, I still believe that. Look out on the moors. Uh, maybe we can talk about this off, off air, so to speak. Look out on the moors. There's a lot of water out there. Mm. You know, different pools, different ponds quite big ones actually um there's a lot out there and i really feel if i was back in cornwall and i'd done all i wanted to do which i think i probably near enough have i would be out you know forget trying to catch the big fish and get x fish that's got a name forget that go out catching those fish that you don't know is there but you have that feeling that they're there that inkling you know that 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 court, you go onto a water, it just almost feels electric. Mm-hmm. And it's not because you've been told it's electric, not because you've been told it contains X, Y, and Z. It's just because you kind of, you just feel it. You know, it just, the water has that atmosphere. There's a lot of waters like that in Cornwall. And who knows if they've got carp or not. I just bet they have. And uh, why, why not go and find out? Why not find out? Have a shitload of fun finding out if they do. If they do and that alarm screams off and you've got a carp on the end, I mean, how does that feel? You know, you didn't know that was going to happen, but you went out, you saw if it was going to happen and you made it happen yourself. I think that's really special in the world of angling. Rather than going to a lake where you know it's got, oh, it's got, yeah, it's got the big one and then it's got this, the long common and it's got that. Yeah, cool, lovely fish. There's no real surprise there, is there? There's no real pioneering. And I think for me now, getting older, I want that side of things. I want the excitement. I want something different from what we've done before. And that's the way I look at it. So I think you're very lucky to be a Cornish angler, Pete. That's my take on it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I can see exactly where you're coming from. I think that's just carp fishing in general. When you when you look at the, say, I guess the generation before us, they would, I think those guys now were just so fortunate looking back i think um we sort of uh we're a bit of an unfortunate generation really it's all sort of like walking down a beaten path did i tell you about Mm -hmm. the 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 granite quarry um down south very sort of southern cornwall um is that the one we used to we went there i don't know if we went there together or not we certainly didn't fish there. We might have checked it out. Okay. Um, and that had a... Uh, is this the one on one on the hill? One on the hill? Right at the top of a mountain. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Yeah, you've really yeah, got, to yeah, lug, yeah, you've yeah. got to lug your gear up. It's, it's, I know it's not a big secret. Quite a few people have fished it. People sort of give up with it because it's snaggy as hell up a massive hill. It's pretty grim getting your gear up there. But yeah, I've had a few fish out of there. Um, trying to catch, there's a big common, the biggest fish in there by sort of like a country mile, mid thirty common, um, and the water's crystal clear. You had it? And no, I haven't not had it. Uh, but I've been told recently that it's um, it's died, so I was a bit gutted about that. Uh, so is this? Well, this this is uh, not. A f- you, are you allowed to fish there? It's not a widely fished place, is it? Yeah. So. Uh, it's owned by a trust. Yes, you're allowed to fish there. It's free fishing, but it's sort of quite unknown. It's it's sort of like people you get there. You get sort of like kids with their sort of uh, beach caster rods fishing for. <laughs> like, it's like oh, gold. Wow. It's, it's like do you know what I mean? It's like that kind of thing. It's it's not fished by serious anglers at all. 
Mm. Um, but there's a, there's a few carp in there which are pretty special. Uh, but I've been told the big common by sort of someone quite reliable has sort of uh, been rumoured sort of um, dead. They found remains. Um, and I know with, like, with stuff like this, it's straight away it's been sort of blamed on Eastern Europeans, but it's it's kind uh, it's it's not the place I would expect mm. an otter to go because there's no waterways like near there. It's at the top of a massive great tor. It's an old granite quarry on top of a tor. Um, mm. I just don't think it would, you know, for an otter to go there, they've got to be seriously hungry, desperate for food. Mm. Um, mm. But I don't know. I don't know. I haven't been up there and checked it out for myself. I know for facts. I've, been, I've spent a lot of time watching the water up there and watching the fish. Um, I mean, it's an amazing lake. I'm a little bit gutted about it because I'd love to have caught that fish. It's the kind of place um, you're fishing and then all of a sudden there's just like horses in the water. It's like people swimming, horses going in and swimming. Amazing. Amazing. Yeah. And it's, <laughs> That's um, cool, yeah. Yeah, it's nuts. And just like the carp aren't spooked by it, mate. It's people with families having like a picnic <laughs> you know um and it's sort of like it's advertised as a open water swimming venue on certain websites and stuff um, how, how about how about going there for our uh our social podcast i just i mean we can do we can but i don't know it just doesn't feel sort of sort of right i don't know it's very small um but yeah we can do we get we certainly get a <laughs> A podcast. Uh, I just want to go stalking. That's a trouble. I couldn't see us sitting down and uh, getting a podcast. Yeah, done. fair enough. I'd yeah, be just watching yeah. the water. And the fish I've caught out of there as well, mate. Oh my god! Like I've had the beer common over my hook bait twice. Uh, once he's picked it up and spat it out. Um, and the second time, my I didn't have a camera. My phone was out of battery. Um, and there's it's like ghosties in there. There's bright orange koi's. I mean, it's like fan-tailed goldfish where people have emptied their um, their ponds in there. Um, there's some like golden orf, massive bream. It's like a weird, strange little lake on top of a hill in Cornwall. Um, and yeah, I had the big common right over my bait, and all I could think about, I was literally just willing it not to not to pick it up because <laughs> I had no Why? no camera. My phone was out of battery, and I just think I'd have been devastated to catch it and not be able oh, to get that picture. Oh, I don't like that. Oh, are you serious? Yeah. I, I hate that, Pete. Yeah? I hate that, man. Yes. I would what do you the, mean? You... I would want the picture. Oh, no, no. Dude, no. and I, I don't ever put like uh, fish catchers on social media, and I never yeah, publicize catches, mate. I've never had. Every fish, every fish you catch, you have to send it to me. <laughs> That's not true. Got another one. Got another one. No, I'm joking. Um, I can't believe you'd say that. that, that if, you've no, surprised me. Yeah, no, I'd really want the. Uh, I'd really want the picture. That's a special I, fish. Do you know I'd what? Be, I'd be so gutted if I didn't have the sort of like the picture for the memory. And mate, I'm I. You know, quite <laughs> often if I catch a fish, I'm. I certainly don't weigh them all. I'm. No, I know, I know. And that's not... I'm joking, I'm joking. And like, quite often I just won't take pictures of fish. It's got to be sort of something special for me to do that. But it's a, it's a fish I sort of wanted for a few years. I fished it on and off. And I think if I didn't get it, uh, if I didn't get Would a... you not see that? Would, would you not... And by the way, just for those listening, yeah, Pete doesn't send me all his pictures. He's not like that whatsoever. Neither of us are joking, in case anyone didn't realise. But would you not... If you caught that fish, would you not be like, shit... This was not meant to be captured on lens. This is actually a blessing because I can just enjoy this. Me and the fish, myself. There's no stress of trying to get the shot. I can just, you know, just enjoy this moment for what it is. Would that not be a big part of it? Yeah, I, yeah. I'd be if I caught the fish. Don't don't get me wrong. I'd be sort of delighted, but I don't. I just think I'd be gutted if I didn't have a photo of it. Wow! Don't get that. Yeah. Do not get that. That's e- that's ego, my friend. That is ego. Yes, you'd want a photo of it, but it's just ego. Wishing you wouldn't catch it. I'd rather catch it and not have a photo than maybe know. wait for another time. Do you know what I mean? That that doesn't make sense to me. But, I just uh, think it's a it's a, it's yeah. a, I think for 
photography, having your photo is a big part of it now, mate. Huge part of sort of carp fishing. But if it was a case of, so you didn't want to catch it because you couldn't have your photo taken of it. Oh, uh, yeah. I don't know, mate. I mean, if I caught you, it, you said delighted. you were wishing it not to. I was take sort of. Bait. I genuinely was. I actually was at the time. I can't sort of pretend I wasn't. But I was just thinking, oh God, mm. like, yeah. I wouldn't have tried to shake mm. it off, mate, if they had picked it up. Don't get me wrong. <laughs> what? Why'd you go fishing, Pete? Why? I don't know. Escapism. Mm. What are you escaping from? Life. Family life. You know that. Just it's it's the one thing I've always always done from a kid and just I just don't know. It's I I get very, very, very little time to myself nowadays, especially, and it's just that mm. that sort of being mm. out. When I think you're a I kid, need, who did you I need a nature mm. fix. I love the outdoors. I've grown up in the outdoors. And it's just, yeah. You know, I think every angle is the same. They can sort of fishing. It's just it's relaxing. You can sit down and chill. You can sort of reflect on things. I think I've made quite a few important life decisions when I've been out on the bank. I've probably made a few bad ones as well. But by the way, that's why I go. Interesting. But yeah, no, I was, I was genuinely like, I just didn't want the fish to pick up the hook bait. So I wouldn't be able to have that photo. Yeah, that's crazy to me. But there we go. Judging me. Different folks, different strokes. Yeah, well, that's okay. You know, I uh, I fish for the enjoyment. You fish for the photo album. It's uh, different different people. <laughs> it's fine. I'm not, not judging you. But yeah, cool. Right. Well, I think on that sad note. Oh, mate, go on. Did you see um, the Golden Globes the other night with Ricky Gervais's sort of slating of Hollywood? Uh, I've heard about it and I, I, yes, I watched the clip. I didn't see the whole Golden Globes, but I watched the clip of him shitting over people. Yeah. Mate, I genuinely enjoyed that so much. <laughs> you're you're a big Ricky J fan though, aren't you? I Ricky used to G be, fan. yeah. I, I honestly haven't watched a lot of his stuff in recent years but um like yeah i thought that was fantastic (laughs) just seeing like tom hanks face (laughs) just oh tom hanks didn't enjoy it yeah (laughs) for those listeners that don't know what pete looks pete looks like uh ricky gervais's little ugly brother is that fair to say yeah cheers for that mate (laughs) you you do a little bit you've got some similarities Uh, yeah Yeah, often got got called david brent when we were at school (laughs) did you just a port Do you know <laughs> <laughs> who who's that other guy that other guy Repugnant. you like i got called him um carl pilkington I got, yes yeah <laughs> there's a picture of me eating a steak in a restaurant um back i used to work at uh hendra holiday parks do you remember that yeah there's a picture of me eating a steak i'm looking real bold this is years ago i was losing my hair still losing it dramatically there's a picture of me eating it i do actually look like carl pilkington yeah that's not good right no it just made me laugh i feel like you look like david brent i look like carl a little bit yeah do i quite the catch aren't we we should go out on the pool if anyone wants to know uh what we look like come visit us on instagram go on to instagram open up your app search the carp angler chronicles and uh, you'll see me and Pete. We've put some throwback photos up there. Um, I want to do more on Instagram. Pete doesn't really do it. Um, I do it. He's supposed to do Facebook. I'm supposed to do Instagram. Um, reality is neither of us have done much. Um, but I hope to do a little bit more in the near future. But come check us out on Instagram. Support us. Follow us. Encourage us to do these podcasts. I guarantee you. Once we get in the rhythm with this and we get a little bit more used to what we're doing, um, we get a little bit more regular, I guarantee they'll be better. Um, and then, look, as you follow us, maybe you can share with us what you want to hear. Let us know, whether that's on Instagram message or Facebook message or even leaving a comment on as a review, whatever. Whatever you want to hear, you know, let us know. We'll cover it for you. We're not doing this for money. We're not sponsored anglers. If someone offered us some money, I would just say, no, thank you. Um, We're just doing this for fun. Um, 
and that's that and we want it to be valuable to you guys it's a way for me and pete to get our copy fix um i just want it to be a win-win all around so if you want us to cover something let us know is that fair to say pete i think so mate yeah definitely definitely yeah and we might come come out with a i'll tell you what i'm gonna make a, a little promise now for the next podcast uh I'll, I'll write some notes <laughs> we can have a bit of structure try and put something just get some topics for us to cover i think uh, <sighs> i think it will be worse i think if you if we planned down if we sat down and said oh we're going to talk about this we're going to talk about that we're going to talk about i just don't well maybe i'm being selfish i don't think i could flow properly i think i'd be i just don't think i'd be i mean look if you ask me a question guess what? I want to give you an honest answer, like mm -hmm. a genuine how I feel about it. I don't want to give you an answer that I've thought about previous and polished. That's just bullshit to me. That's not genuine to me. And this is you know what I mean. Maybe you're yeah, different. With, and maybe with, there's nothing wrong with that. But that's how I feel. With the podcast previously as well, that we've recorded so like you can't just go over old ground again, because even though no one else has heard it, it's just not natural. That's really frustrating. Because no. Yeah, the last one in particular on the bank, which we might, I don't know, I think you could put it up onto YouTube at some point, maybe as a bit of bonus content. Because that was, that was a good one. I enjoyed For that For sure. Mm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I can, we, can, we can release that on YouTube for sure. I don't know about uploading it to Stitcher and iTunes because it got rejected. Unless That's I can it. somehow up the file size, which I mm. imagine I can. Yeah, Somehow. I think so. I think you can tag it onto the um, back end of a podcast in the future, maybe. Just crop it into the back end of one, and then instead of it being just over an hour, it'll be a couple of hours long. Do you know what I mean? Maybe do something like that in the, in the future. I presume people are bored already, though. I think we've been going like an hour and a half. Um, yeah. Last thing they want to do is listen to another podcast now. <laughs> <laughs> yep. Uh, yeah. Talking of anyway, so gone. Talking of Instagram, how many followers have you got? Have you drummed us up now? In Instagram, so let me just load it up. Well, look, me, and when I say me, you don't know who that is. Sam, Sam Barley. I am in charge of Instagram. Peter, Peter Hamilton Tui, he's called. Very posh name. Yeah, I am. Peter Hamilton Tui. Very, very, uh, very regal. wealthy family. Mm. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Um, <laughs> you're in charge of Facebook. How many you got on Facebook, Pete? Uh, uh, I don't know. I haven't looked at Facebook, to be honest. Twitter, we're about 12. I think, <laughs> I think I've got us up to 12. Yeah, I think it's about I think it's about 8 on Facebook. The trouble with Facebook um, is it just shares your Instagram posts, so I don't need to do anything. Well, you know, you do, because it's a different algorithm of it. On Instagram, we've got 641 people following us. So that, and look, who gives a shit about followers? We don't care about that. But um, we don't care about that, Pete. Why are you, why are you even asking? I just amazed it's, it's that high. I was going to say, on I know on YouTube we've got, I was chatting to you earlier, we've got seven subs. It's nine subscribers on YouTube, which is insane. And we've got uh, 44 listeners on YouTube on overall downloads, which would be between Stitcher and... Uh, iTunes, etc. It's two hundred and thirty odd. Really? Um, on the first podcast, yeah. Oh mate, I'm Which surprised at that. Isn't many? Is not many. Look, if you're a hot girl on Instagram and uh, show a bit of ass, you're going to get more likes than that for sure. Um, Podcasting is a bit different; it's a slow burner. But yeah, and we've got six hundred and forty-one followers on Instagram, which is amazing. So. If you follow us on Instagram, thank you. Right, that's that. Like we've done one podcast, and already we've got that many followers. That's really nice to see. I feel like we're doing you all a disservice by just producing one podcast up until now. <laughs> um, it's not good enough. I mean it. I mean it. Um, but thank you for for following us and showing an interest in what we do. Um, me, I can only speak for myself, but I'm going to really make a conscious effort to put out more content for you folks. Uh, maybe I'll do some uh, live videos of myself out angling or something. Um, maybe Pete can do it as well. Um, in fact, Pete brings me on to say, in the first episode, which was several months ago, 
um, you said that you have plans to start a blog, a video blog on YouTube. Yeah, I did. I wanted to. Yeah, I did want to. <laughs> Down What's at happening? Um, Down it. Yeah, to be honest, I, well, I we we're talking about the um, <laughs> name the lake now. How bad is that? Mm. We have to beat that out. Uh, we're talking about. Well, it wasn't a lake, lake that we fish. spoke about much. So, yeah, it wasn't. Um, it's nothing we've spoken about, so it's fine. Um, but it was in episode one, and uh, yeah, I I wanted to do a little video blog that I think it would be a, a great sort of um place to do that. Like you can do a full sort of however many. So I my video blog was more of a documentary in my head. So, but I reckon over the course of however many months or whatever, you could really make quite a good little thing, little little video. Um, but we'll see, we'll see, we'll see how I settle into these new waters if I get my ticket. Not promising anything. Mm. Camera shy. Okay, mate. And we, yeah, I know you. We need to talk about yeah whether you're going to fish for the old uh, the old lake that we were speaking about. Um, all the new ones. We'll do that on the next podcast. There we go. Anyway, I think we need to wrap this up. Anything else you want to say before we, we head off, Pete? No. No, 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 no. All done. All done. Perfect. Thanks, guys. Thanks for listening. Really appreciate you. If you can, you know, find it in your heart to leave us a review, preferably a nice one rather than a shit one. Really appreciate it um, on iTunes or Stitcher or whatever, wherever you listen to this. Leave us a review if you can. Um, really, really appreciate that. It helps us. If you could subscribe, it helps us. Um, and if you want to give us some feedback, you want to let us know what's up, you want to ask for something to be covered, then please do so. You can email info at thecarpanglerchronicles.com. That's info at thecarpanglerchronicles.com. Otherwise, you can find us on social media, Facebook, Instagram. Just search The Carpangler Chronicles. Send us a message and even myself or Pete will get back to you as soon as we can and we will really take on board your suggestions and feedback. That's it, folks. Thanks ever so much for listening. I'll speak to you very soon. See ya.